Today, we're talking about a G.I. Joe who perhaps has had one of the more unique pathways to the G.I. Joe team and to G.I. Joe lore. That's right, today we're talking about a lady with a classified government name so secret she's only ever been known by her code name. Today is all about Helix. Agent Helix is a character designed by Mayan Escalante and developed by video game designer Double Helix Games for the G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra video game, a game that tied into the 2009 film of the same name. And in the grand tradition of G.I. Joe, this also meant comic book appearances. And because she was developed by Double Helix Games, they gave this character the name Helix. Per her file card, Agent Helix is a covert operative with advanced martial arts training, expert marksmanship skills, Olympic class gymnastic abilities that allow her signature whirlwind attack strike to bring an overwhelming blend of kicks and firepower to bear on her enemy. Before her time with the G.I. Joe team, Helix had mastered or nearly mastered martial arts. She would compete in tournaments around the globe, both officially sanctioned tournaments and underground ones. Some of those tournaments were to the death, but Helix had the ability to counter a new form of martial art and be able to master it, fight, and defeat her opponent with nary a scratch. Duke and Hawk would later say the doctors attribute this to being a savant. However, as Hawk would also classify, likely not autistic, though admittedly, the doctors aren't sure precisely where her abilities come from. In 2009, the G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra Helix Special Edition comic book by Brian Reed was released. This was both a video game tie-in and a promotional movie giveaway. It served as both a prelude to the G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra movie and a prelude to the G.I. Joe Special Agent Helix series by IDW Publishing. The EA promo comic was simply a preview of the first six pages of the Helix special that also came with a big poster for the Rise of Cobra movie. For the Agent Helix special, the tagline for the book was this. Enter Special Agent Helix, a deadly young woman who may well define the future of G.I. Joe's combat operations if Duke can keep her alive long enough. This special tale ties in with the new G.I. Joe video game. The book opens up with Helix sparring at G.I. Joe training facility Beta. We immediately get to see one of her abilities in action, her total organic battlefield awareness ability, bringing everything down to a calculation and an ongoing assessment, counting everything from angles of attack to rounds left in magazines of her opponent's weapons. It allowed her to almost immediately take out her sparring partners. When Hawk and Duke were talking about Helix, Hawk revealed that she's one of his special projects, an alpha-level G.I. Joe operative who, officially anyhow, doesn't exist. When Helix went missing, Hawk put Duke in charge of tracking her down and bringing her in safely from the field. He was to operate independently in order that, succeed or fail, no one else on the G.I. Joe team would know he undertook this mission. Hawk said that Helix had been sent to Tokyo, Japan to infiltrate a Cobra smuggling and drug trafficking operation there, run by a guy named Koji Sato. Her cover was as a Telakura girl, a phone date operator. Sato ran clubs that were fronts for prostitution and, though married, would still meet with his staff, and so this was Helix's into the organization. They got close. Then, a week before the Hawk and Duke meeting, Helix went off the radar and missed her scheduled check-ins. So Duke traveled to Tokyo, tracked her down, and saved her from Sato and Cobra. Helix got the jump on Duke and tied him up back at her place, and Helix let Duke know that Sato planned to blow up the Tokyo Stock Exchange by detonating a bomb from the trading floor, taking himself out in the blast because, well, he was the bomb. His intestines were packed with C4 with the detonator built into his wristwatch. Apparently, he'd screwed up a shipment for G.I. Joe, and so they gave him the choice of getting pieces of his wife back in the mail or turning himself into a bomb to save her. Little did he know, Cobra had already taken out his wife, and so Helix took down Sato before he could explode. 2010's manga two-parter G.I. Joe Future Noir put a G.I. Joe team of Duke Scarlet, a cyborg-like sci-fi, and Helix, along with Yurasha Kage clan's Snake Eyes, back in Japan in the near future again defending Tokyo and the entire nation from the insidious threat of the Cobra terrorist cult and Cobra Commander, aka King Cobra, along with foes like Zartan, some Vipers, and even Dr. Mindbender. They'd unleashed a swarm of insects that were transforming citizens into insects, and this brought them right into battle at a chemical plant with Baroness and Nemesis Enforcer. In 2010, in Chuck Dixon's G.I. Joe series, Helix was sparring with Snake Eyes and holding her own. Afterward, she told the team that she was born with several abnormalities in her brain chemistry and her brain structure that allow her to see the world in data sets and thereby almost immediately calculate possible responses and probable outcomes. In this continuity, the idea for G.I. Joe training was to adopt the team to her fighting methods. This would allow them to predict Cobra's movement through their teleporters and be able to set up an ambush wherever there's trouble and even before. Scarlet came to her because she'd been spending a lot of time with Snake Eyes. Not to worry though, Helix says, relationships have too many variables. 
the Joes engineered a teleporter of their own, and the first one to be scanned ended up being Helix. Helix then joined an interdiction op called named Operation Rodeo, where they had to extract a narco lord named Pablo Ortega, who was also working with Cobra, identified by the Snake Hunter program. Helix and Snake Eyes were on point as they worked their way through the jungle in the AO. Helix and Snake Eyes landed on Ortega's helipad, took out his foot soldiers, and secured the area, and then assaulted the compound together, taking out a whole squad of Cobra Vipers by themselves. Helix and Snake Eyes then teleported and broke into Section Zero of Cobra's secret Arctic base with a trio of firearms and a katana. They quickly turned the interior into a free fire zone and began punching holes in Vipers with hot lead. Helix found a P90 and continued to cut her bloody swath through the Cobra. The enemy there were trapped inside the mass device chamber with them with nowhere to hide as Snake Eyes and Helix shot them all down. One guy tried to take Helix out with an AA-12 automatic shotgun, but her gymnastic skills allowed her to flip around and hit the guy in the goggles with her pistols that she held akimbo. They managed to escape into the snow outside via a hatch before Cobra destroyed the entire chamber. Helix was hit and wounded though, losing blood by the moment as Snake Eyes took the stick on a Cobra tank. Iceberg dropped into a cyst from a moose, a massive C-17 Globemaster, and they presumably were able to E&E &E and successfully extract. In Cobra Civil War, Helix was at the pit when Hawk walked in and she sensed something was wrong. Hawk wasn't Hawk. She was still there when Storm Shadow broke in and a tech guy named Sherware went missing. She was talking with Flint about this and Fake Hawk, though she said her condition prevents her from recognizing faces reliably. Later, a fake Dusty in a mech suit shot a prisoner in the brig, so Helix, Flint, and Scarlet took him down with an EMP grenade. Later, Helix was part of a mission to Nanjiao to fight back against a totalitarian regime. In country, she was bushwhacking with Snake Eyes through the Zamdam region while Alpha Team set up a FOB nearby. But as soon as they got to some temple ruins, Snake Eyes sprayed her with a knockout gas so he could confront some ninjas alone. And it seemed as though he died, so back at base, Scarlet talked with Helix as she was the last one with him before he was seemingly KIA. When the Joes were compromised, they set up their new HQ in a dry docked and decommissioned USS Flag aircraft carrier, and Helix was sparring with Deep Six and Torpedo when Scarlet came to her after finding out that Snake Eyes was, in fact, still alive. Helix said to Scarlet, perhaps you heard what you wanted to hear, which pissed her off, and so Scarlet punched Helix with a massive right hook to the face for that comment. The two ended up fighting while the rest of the team watched. It then became a hunt for Snake Eyes, who it turns out had rejoined the Arashikage Ninja Clan. Softmaster went after Snake Eyes too while Storm Shadow confronted and defeated Helix inside of the temple, but the Joes were able to get into the jungle to strike using information that they had gotten from Helix. In the 2014 G.I. Joe series, Agent Helix was on the field team with Flint, Roadblock, and Main frame who helped fight back against Tomax, Baroness, and PR Flack, aka Siren. Also in 2014, Helix linked up with Scarlet's special missions team in Davina Bay off the coast of snowy Archangel Russia. She was with the Joes still as they entered Beaver Falls, right next to Castle Destro. There, Helix was on Overwatch and ended up running into a cyborg battle android trooper named Katrina on a rooftop. Katrina almost won, but Helix smashed her head with an EMP grenade, which fried Katrina's wiring. Helix and the team also captured Copperback and left the area with her on a helicopter. In IDW's Revolution event in 2016, Helix made another appearance, fighting alongside Snake Eyes when full-scale war broke out in the wake of the Transformers and Decepticons arriving on Earth. 2018's A Real American Hero Silent Option miniseries was Helix's official introduction into the main A Real American Hero continuity. Here's where we finally get to learn a little bit more about her past. As a child, Helix had been captured and jailed by human traffickers. When G.I. Joe got wind of the operation, they sent in Snake Eyes, who shot and sliced the traffickers down, and it was Snake Eyes who had found Helix tied up. When he untied her, she ended up fighting back right alongside him, and she learned how to fight just by watching Snake Eyes moves. Snake Eyes took this girl to Hawk, who then brought her for a medical workup, and there, still traumatized, Helix attacked a doctor. So Hawk ended up having to call in a bunch of favors, ultimately finding her a home. She was then adopted by Bob and Carla, along with their son Joseph. Helix's father Bob was retired special forces, and mom Carla, a mixed martial arts finalist, and together they made the decision to foster a child with special needs, which is how they agreed to accept this child from Hawk. As a young girl, Helix was teased and bullied for her referenced ASD, and so mom introduced her to her own MMA training setup in the basement, and thus began her journey as an accomplished martial artist. The whole time, Hawk watched from a distance, as his most secret asset was cultivated and grew while she sharpened her skills. But then in the present, Helix was missing again, so Hawk tasked Bomb Strike with spinning up a team to find her and bring her in. Bombstrike paired up with Don Moreno to find her, uncovering a revenge quest against those very same human traffickers from Trushula 
Bismia, who'd kidnapped her as a child, along with all those other victims. Bob Strike sent Don and Alpine to Trucial Abysmia to track Helix down, which is when they discovered that Helix had been registered at the Royal Arms Hotel for the past two weeks as Thea Ellis Lawrence. Helix had bankrolled her rogue expedition by hacking offshore accounts from major traffickers. In her hotel room, Helix had three main traffickers on her board, the worst of the worst. They found Gaz bandaged up as Helix had burned and tortured him for three days trying to get Elsa's location, but all she got was Gregory's location in Barovia. Gregory was dead, but they found their way a few days later to an offshore oil rig off the coast of Scotland, and on the rig they found video footage of Helix shooting everybody. The unstoppable killing machine that she was that found her battling Firefly, Elsa, and a cluster of red ninjas. On the helipad, they found Elsa with Helix captive and wrapped in explosives. When Bachman's helicopter dusted off, Bachman shoved Helix out the door, and Helix managed to free herself mid-air before the explosives detonated. So Torpedo then helped pull her onto the whale where she sat on the forward part of the hull, quiet, forlorn, and closed off. Helix ended up giving Don Moreno a memory stick that mainframe on the USS flag was able to access. So via a Darklonian manifest logged on the memory stick, they were able to track a cargo to New Jersey, and so Ace was the one to fly bomb strike Don and Helix in an EA-6B Prowler to intercept at Newark Airport. That ended up being a setup, and right when they got there, the plane exploded with the three females thrown in the blast. It turns out that Bachman, Firefly, and the Red Ninjas had gone to Helix's parents' house nearby. Helix drove them in a military dump truck back to her house. There she ran inside, shooting her way through wave after wave of Red Ninja, while the other two went to work on the enemy outside. Then she cut her way up to the second floor with a katana running red with blood. Half of Bachman's face was shot off, but Helix decided to let her live and suffer rather than kill her off and spare her the pain that she had given to all those other kids and herself. They then had to hide in the panic room at her parents' house while a SWAT team swept and cleaned the house. In a Real American Hero issue 252, Helix was at a restaurant eating ramen noodles with both Granny and Jinx. And she was at Granny's toy shop in the East Village a few issues later for Sean Collins' birthday party. And then she went to Fort Wadsworth with throwing out bomb strike Scarlet and Jinx to continue sparring and practicing. Helix attacked first, followed by the other ladies, but Sean held his own. That meant she was on base when CG, Laura 343, and her group of other CGs and Night Vipers, Alley Vipers, Rag Vipers, Toxo Vipers, Techno Vipers, Heat Vipers, and Hiss Drivers attacked intent on capturing and converting Sean, who they still all thought was Snake Eyes. Unfortunately, they were all overpowered and Sean was gone. Back in the East Village, the Joe's ninja element crossed swords and vowed to rescue Sean together. We take care of our own, Granny declared. The Arashikage go to war. So they all took a passenger train from New York to Springfield, and there they made entry into the community center where Sean was being held via an access corridor from the Springfield Hospital. They ran into some night vipers in the darkened tunnel, and then they ran into Sean who had an unconscious Laura 343 slumped over his shoulder. They ended up blinking up with the airborne team and an intense firefight erupted in those close quarters. They fought their way outside and then joined the larger battle with Helix blasting away from the roof of a command suburban. Then, mission accomplished, Sean was safe. Helix later joined the Joes on the Hill for a closed-door hearing by the G.I. Joe Oversight Committee into the nature of their unsanctioned actions in Springfield. A new G.I. Joe named Sherlock burst into the chamber to alert of a fake Wade Collins, which is when Helix jumped in to attack fake Wade. In issue 289, Helix was with Don again, this time in a vamp on the outskirts of New Orleans with Phantom 1-9er in the skies above as they tracked their prey. Dr. Mindbender and Laura were nearby during their plot to outsource upgraded back production to manufacture the staff for the Cobra Casino on Cobra Island. Helix launched a drone right off the back of the vamp, and through that, she was able to get eyes on Mindbender's Aspid helicopter with her drone. When Don and Helix got to the perimeter of the dome that the Aspid had landed near, a cop tried to stop them, but that didn't stop the ladies. They broke in and even made the officer cover their sex from the perimeter. That's when they spied that the operation was run by Revanche Robotics and Blue Ninjas. The robot mysteriously, perfectly replicated some of the moves that Helix's mom had taught her as a child. They broke off and egressed, but one robot robot chased after them, unleashing a flurry of attacks on the two Joes. Helix's AP and jacketed hollow points had no effect on the robot's outer shell, but then Helix found his weakness. When it opened its face hatch to locate the drone, Dawn drove her sword right through its face. Sean, Scarlet, Dawn, Jinx, and Helix then put on some face masks and fat suits and infiltrated Cobra Casino via a cruise ship. 
In another back corridor, the pair ran into a robot again, and they had to fight her, forcing Helix to pull her M92 out. She literally shot the robot's head off. Their faces were now identified, and so Alpha 001, leading the Blue Ninjas, issued an order to all hunt, kill sleepers in the casino to eliminate the two ladies. With their cover blown, others on the recon team were going to need help from the backup team outside. And in an elevator to their room, they battled another robot before getting their longs from their hotel room. Sean and Scarlet showed up to help while Helix shot a hole through the legion of robots in the hallway with her M4. Helix then shot out the cameras in the hallway with a few 9 mic mic rounds. And in a utility corridor, Helix and the group ran into more robots and they made quick work of those too. And they managed to finally make it to the room with the brainwave scanner where Jinx was trapped, but Cobra had the fatal funnel of the doorway covered. After they managed to apprehend Dr. Mindbender, they then ran into Laura 343 and her vipers and they were completely trapped in that room. They were still trapped when the resurrected Genghis Khan broke free of his containment, ultimately becoming Serpentor Khan. Helix and Khan fought, but Genghis pushed her back with a nasty headbutt that bloodied her nose. Scarlet, Helix, and Jinx escaped in the drainage system to the backup team outside while Don and Sean held off Cobra. With the relief team from the pit inbound via Wild Bill's Four Fans of Freedom, a big C-130 Hercules, Big Herc, Helix, and the team had to quickly take out some AAA emplacements so the Herc, escorted by Phantom X-19, could land. They all fought another battle on Cobra Island, and that's how A Real American Hero ended with IDW with issue 300, which means Helix is still out there and will likely still be a part of the G.I. Joe stories going forward. Marika Mashburn voiced Helix in 2010 for G.I. Joe Operation Hiss, and then Nancy Truman voiced her for G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra. Cobra video game. In 2009, Helix had her first action figure for the Rise of Cobra line. She came complete with an HK G11, dual 10 mic mic auto pistols, a machete, and a missile firing radar weapon. And then in 2023, Hasbro announced that Agent Helix is in the pipeline for the Classified series, which means there's plenty more of Agent Helix to come. And with that, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.